And we're back. This is Nuclear Reactor 9 and 8 here, and we are playing Back to the Future, the game. We are now in part 4 of part 1 of It's About Time. We have just went back in time, I believe February 1931. We're now known as... Oh, uh, Henry? Henry? No, no, it's... Harry... I... It's something. Something. Something Harry. Anyways, now we have a little bit of information. We are now gonna see if we can find Doc and hopefully clear his name. And let's start. Not hiring. Okay, then. I can sightsee later. Right now, I've got to find the doc. Okay. Uh, I like to control some of the t on my uh, gamepad, but at the same time, the mouse is way more useful. I could actually sprint the gamepad, but not in the mouse. Hey, uh, can I get some moose? Gee. What does this look like? A hunting lodge? Okay, so... Far enough back in time where moose is not a thing of hair, then, I guess. Can we, uh... Flop? Majestic arms. Transients welcome. Shark. Wow, looks like they used a real shark. Money. I don't really have any business in there. That's got a point. Oh, if we can open up a bank at this time and reopen it again in 1985, 86, we could have a shit ton of money by Futurama logic. Or any logic. Or I guess this logic. is where the speakeasy burned down. How'd Doc ever get mixed up in that? Really burned down the speakeasy. Is there anything I could see? Here? Just think. <laughs> In 55 years, I'll be able to rent five year old movies on this spot. Just think. <laughs> In 55 years, I'll be able to rent. Okay, uh, out of business. Oh, okay, I think. Can we? Yes. Scene, I believe. The nice hat. Oh, um, fly, Biff. What? Kid. Grandpa. What? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry. So I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. 
think, McFly? The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think uh, Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh... Now scram! You got it, boss. Oh. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off <laughs> to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, that's... Ah, jeez. Counter... Pipe? Looks like these pipes go into the basement. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Nice rack. <laughs> yeah, we got all kinds of uh, culinary enhancements back there. Sure, they do. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Oh. And not being seen by Tanner is not enough then? Uh, Maybe I should go to the jail and talk to Doc before I start dialing random people in 1931. <laughs> uh. Operator, connect me to number seven. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Maybe that's my problem. Lazy hands. Uh, that's a good one. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow. Actually, I won't be born for about 40 years. Uh, wait. Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Come for the soup, stay for the salvation. <laughs> Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram. Oof. Hill Valley Police Station. Cripes, this place looks old, even for 1931. Doc! Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? <laughs> you sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Boy, yeah, you can show. hold off on that, Doc. Oh. Great Scott! 
I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. <laughs> Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Let's see. Oh, I see. The authorities may or may not be in cahoots with the gang. It is 1930s. Some of them could be corrupted. Let's go back in time. Door is too far away, so that can't be done. Plus, he's in jail. Let's make a stand. I don't know if anyone's gonna. Well. Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puppy mass of bones and gristle. Well, who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? <laughs> Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it! Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions! Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. <laughs> Why don't we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Oof. Right. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Old. Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break out <coughs> of jail? Precisely! How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed Just to- Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. This is like 41 years old. Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. <laughs> I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. <coughs> I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Oh, so that create some form of new memory, but then again, with his age... Unless it also goes with one's own memory as well, which could be a parent. Oh my god, my thing is crazy completely. What was I saying? Parallel, that's what I was thinking of. 
parallel memory, in which, I guess, a parallel memory is I don't know what the hell I'm thinking of. Just like to think, or talk. To the phone, wait. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. It's not what I need. Nope, don't look. Uh, there we go. Well, we're gonna go call our younger self. Have that in hand. So, now we know that Doc did blow up the speakeasy. He will get gunned down the next day, I think. And now we have to talk to a 17 year old self to create the rocket power drill. Let's see how this plays out, shall we? In the next episode of Back to the Future, the game, part five.